will be a product review and teardown of the Mastec MS6612 digital light meter. The guys from Gearbest.com contacted me a while ago and asked if I would like to review something from their inventory. I said yes and picked this light meter for review and about a week later I had the item in my hands thanks to their fast THL shipping. So I strongly suggest you check out their website as you might find things that interest you in there. I could have chosen something else but went for this light meter because I didn't have one in the lab and I thought it would be useful to have one especially considering the upcoming LED lighting projects that I want to get done here in the lab. I will be able for example to compare before and after light intensity at my workbench. I will mainly discuss build quality and user interface regarding this meter as I don't have any other light meter in the lab to compare its performance. Also I'm going to evaluate its build quality from the point of view of a general purpose multimeter. So let's get started and open the box to see what we get inside. The meter comes in this black carrying pouch. And inside we get the meter itself. A cheap looking 9 volt battery. And the user manual. Which is in English thankfully. But before going any further and installing the battery inside this meter I would like to take it apart and evaluate its build quality. From the exterior it does have a nice grip on the sides with a rubbery feel. It's quite light but you don't expect to see much inside of a light meter except for a light sensor and a microcontroller reading the data and displaying it on screen. It looks like uh, we have these two screws to take out and this one from the battery cover. So it looks like the screw for, for the battery cover, it's, it has metal threaded insert and that makes sense because this is the one that you'll be opening often. I hope not that often, I hope it won't be chewing through batteries. And it looks like we have a third screw in here, keeping the meter together. Yeah, so these three screws keeping the case together, they, they don't have uh, metal threaded inserts, but then again, you shouldn't be poking around the meter opening those screws. Now it should, I should be able to open it. Oh, I missed, there is a four screw here. Those of you watching probably noticed that. So it easily separated. Let me just zoom in on this side to get a better look. And to my surprise it looks like we have an MSP430 from Texas Instruments microcontroller in here. You usually don't find this in uh, Chinese multimeters because they use uh, bare dice and uh, you typically see that blob of resin on a PCB. They don't go for the more expensive reputable manufacturer microcontrollers. But in this one we do seem to have an MSP430 ICD Texas Instruments logo in here. And that could mean, if properly designed, that could mean great battery life for this product. Because as we all know MSP430 microcontrollers are 
great in terms of energy efficiency. But let's start from the left and, and discuss what we see on the PCB. For the battery terminals, we have these two springs making contact with the battery tabs on the other side of the case. So that's excellent design, no wires to get loose or unsoldered. These spring contacts will always make contact. And right here on the left side, uh, I see a diode and uh, what probably is a voltage regulator. The diode seems to be in series with the plus terminal, so that could be in there for reverse battery protection. Continuing uh, in here, we see a JTAG header, and this is for programming the microcontroller. In here, we have a crystal oscillator, and in here, we have another couple of chips. I can't read the numbers of these two, I'll need to go to a magnifying glass, but this small one does have an analog devices logo on it, so it probably is a um, amplifier for the photodiode that is on this separate PCB. So not much to see in terms of uh, electronics on this PCB, all the magic happens in software. We just have the photodiode capturing light and then the software inside the MSP430 does all the magic and shows the correct measurement on the LCD screen. Let's try removing uh, these two PCB to see what uh, kind of light sensor they're using and what we have on the other side of this PCB. I'm gonna have to be careful not to get any dust or fingerprints on this sensor. And better yet, let me just switch to my macro lens to get a better view of this sensor. So here is a close-up of the sensor used in this light meter. I'm not sure what kind of sensor it is. It could be a photodiode, it only has two terminals. And what we see on the top of the sensor looks to be a filter. So this sensor will only pick up light in a certain wavelength. And I believe uh, they mentioned that in the specs of this meter. They say that it only operates between 320 and 730 nanometers. So that colored glass that you see on top of the sensor, that makes sure only a certain wavelength of light is passing through to the actual photodiode sensor. We also see a date code on this PCB and uh, it appears to be designed or manufactured in 2010 so that is already five years old let's also remove the main pcb and on the other side we'll get the lcd of course the rubber membrane for all the buttons and probably some other passives So as you can see, we have a single-sided load, we have no components on this uh, bottom side of the PCB. The LCD uses these uh, classical zebra strips to connect to the PCB. And the uh, buttons are a classical design rubber membrane that just touches these uh, footprints on the PCB. So nothing special to see there. So I'm going to put this uh, PCB back. One thing I would like to check before putting the meter back is the uh, voltage at which the whole board operates. I suspect it will be 3.3 volts, but let me just do a quick measurement and confirm that. I am supplying 9 volts through these two clips from my bench supply. Now I'll try to check the uh, VCC because I have a test point right here to see what the voltage used around the board is. 
and as suspected it is exactly 3.3 volts. I'm also going to use my HP 3478A in series to check the current consumption of this meter and right now with the uh, meter turned on it looks to be about 1.22 milliamps so not bad in terms of power usage and I'm just going to flip the meter on the front side and I'm going to slowly lower the power supply voltage just to see at which level the meter is going to turn off as you can see the voltage level right now is at 9 volts I'm going to slowly turn it down and see when the meter signals for low battery or turns off so 7.5 volts is still ok Six point five volts still okay. Six volts, and when I reach six volts, the low battery indicator turned on on the LCD. I don't think you can clearly see it in the video. It's right there in the corner, and it also beeps. So let's go further down and see when the meter turns off. five point five volts and the meter is still working and at this point it makes sense that the meter will work down to uh, three point three volts plus the dropout voltage of the uh, regulator they're using and they're probably using a low dropout regulator so the meter should be working uh, down to four, vol four volts no problem Yep, so the meter is still working down to 4 volts at 3.5 volts I think we're going to start seeing some uh, issues oh, I can't believe it I'm down to 3.3 volts and the meter is still working I'm sure that by now we are probably seeing less than 3.3 volts on the VCC of the meter but since the MSP430 is a low power microcontroller it continues to work below 3.3 volts wow 2.7 volts and it still works but I'm starting to see the digits on the LCD fading yeah so it's not a problem of uh, the microcontroller because the microcontroller continues to operate but the LCD doesn't get the required bias voltage to get the contrast up that of course won't be the case when using a real 9 volt battery because uh, those drop out uh, much earlier and they, and they can't supply the required current to the multimeter I've been inspired by Dave Jones from EEV blog latest batterizer videos and in a similar way I'm going to take a look at a typical 9V battery datasheet to see how much battery life, in theory, we're going to get out of this thing considering the measured current consumption. Assuming my uncalibrated HP 3478A measurements were correct, the current consumption was between 1.1 mA and 1.3 mA at 9V and was fairly constant, not exceeding 1.3 mA, even as low as 3.3 volts input. The variation in current consumption was observed when the measured light intensity varied, so for very bright light shined on the meter, the current consumption went up to 1.3 mA, but for varying the DC supply voltage from 3 to 9 volts, the current stayed constant. We're going to be talking ballpark figures here, so let's consider the worst case scenario of 9 volts and 1.3 milliamps. That's 11.7 milliwatts consumption we're looking at. On the screen, we have a typical 9 volt battery datasheet. Unfortunately, for constant current, which was mostly our case, the lowest figure we get is for 2 milliamps, but our current is lower than that. 
So I'm instead going to take a look at the constant power graph, which I find closer to our real setup. Although we have 11.7 milliwatts worst case scenario, that figure is getting smaller as voltage goes down and by the time we reach 8 volts we are already at 10.4 milliwatts. So I think looking at the 10 milliwatts curve will give us a good estimation. We're not even going to talk about cutoff voltage and remaining unused energy because as shown this meter will work down to 3 volts meaning it will use every last bit of energy stored in a 9 volt battery. Now the graph is telling us that we're looking at approximately 470 hours of continuous usage. That's over 19 days of continuous usage. In reality, that figure might be lower due to the fact that, for example, when the buzzer is used, it uses quite a bit more power to generate a beep. But still, a very good battery life. And the reason for that low power consumption is the MSP430 ultra low power microcontroller and good design practice. Looking at the specs of this light meter, I didn't see any IP rating for uh, dust or water, stuff like that, that could go in and damage the uh, circuit board. So it's not designed to be used in any kind of uh, harsh environment. It's just for indoor use and outdoor use where possible and where you don't get it exposed to dust or water. You don't get any o-ring on the battery door, you don't get any o-ring on the outside walls, so you'd better avoid exposing it to the elements. I think we talk now. I think this is enough about the uh, internal construction. Let's put the meter back together and uh, see how it works. I like the fact that they're using these uh, spring contacts on the 9 volt battery and they're not using the typical wire and uh, one hung low connector for the 9 volt battery that will get ripped off after a couple of battery replacements. Before going any further let me just point to some of the features of this meter. It has automatic and manual range switching, a min max function, relative value measurement and peak value measurement, a measurement range from 0 to 200,000 lux with a resolution up to 0.01 lux it can display in lux or candela it has an accuracy of plus or minus 3% the wavelength it measures at is between 320 and 730 nanometers the response time is uh, half a second and it also has an auto power off function if you don't press any of the keys within 10 minutes so let's turn the meter on and see what we get on the screen As soon as you turn on the meter, you will notice that annoying beep, but that can be turned off by short pressing the on off button, and that will silence the beep for further operation, but I don't think it remembers that once you turn it off. Let's test that. Long press for turning it off, short press for turn on, yeah, and the beep, the annoying beep is back. So every time you turn on the meter, you do have to disable it. Now as you can see I have the meter with the cover on and it's showing 0.01 lux and for that there is a zero calibration function and if we do a long press on this hold zero button it should auto calibrate the sensor with the cover on. Adjust is being shown on the LCD Right now it's running the calibration function and I can see the analog bar graph slowly increasing. Right, so now the cal calibration has finished. Oh, and it's still showing 0.01 lux. I guess that's the lowest it, it can go. So let's take the cover off and see how much light I get on my workbench. So right now I'm seeing about 1,000. 480 lux but this is with the lights adjusted so I don't get any reflections on the product itself but it should be quite close to what I'm usually working on right here on my workbench we can use this button to switch between lux and foot candela 
it looks like this product was specifically designed for the US market because it's using the foot candela measurement unit instead of the meter candela unit that we'd be using uh, here in Europe but I'm not uh, interested in that I will mainly use the lux measurement unit let's go through the other functions that we have on this meter we have the uh, mean max function when activated the max function will keep on the display the maximum reading up to that moment and we can switch to the mean function which will also keep on the display the minimum measurement value up to that moment and we can clear that by long pressing we have the uh, zero hold button and just earlier I showed you how to use the zero function by long pressing this button it will uh, auto calibrate the meter short pressing the hold button will hold the current measured value on the LCD until you short press it again which will release it and continue measurements the analog bar graph seems to be working quite nice with a considerably higher update rate when compared to the actual measurement on the screen and we know from the specs that the actual measurement on the screen gets half a second update rate so about two updates per second but the bar graph is obviously getting more updates per second probably more than five I don't know I'm just guessing here we also have a relative measurement function which can be quite useful to compare for example to a previous measurement so right now we're getting uh, 1500 and approximately 20 lux if I press the uh, roll button it will take that measurement and store it and uh, further measurements will be relative to that so right now if we're seeing minus 10 lux it means uh, the meter is measuring actually 10 lux less than the uh, stored relative measurement and we can clear that by pressing the relative button again and it goes back to normal measuring mode we also get a peak function on the same button and if we keep the button pressed for one second we activate the peak function and we have peak and menu showed on the screen and that means the meter is in peak detection mode and I believe manual range mode I don't exactly understand why they have this mode on because you can basically get the same functionality with the min max function so it appears that in peak mode the uh, meter only records the greatest value and lastly we have the uh, run button which will put the meter in uh, manual ranging mode so right now I believe we can change the range by short pressing the run button appears to be working and long pressing the run button will return the meter to auto ranging which works quite well and it's quite rapid we can make a test so from almost uh, no luminous intensity it auto ranges in probably less than one second so that's quite good I don't have any other uh, light intensity meter in the lab to compare the uh, accuracy of this uh, Mastec meter but according to various user reviews that I've read on Amazon it looks like the meter is quite accurate as uh, some users had other more expensive meters to compare with and also on the uh, Amazon reviews I've noticed uh, one buyer reporting a problem in the firmware of this device and I wanted to uh, check that as soon as I got the meter so uh, it appears that uh, while in auto mode and set to foot candles if you dim the light to a low reading then bring it back to a significantly higher light environment the meter goes to overload instead of auto ranging so let's test that I'm going to put the uh, meter in the foot candle mode I'm going to cover the lens so right now we're getting uh, zero light intensity if we rapidly bring it to a high intensity environment it should go to overload if the bug is present in this firmware yeah it does seem to be present exactly as described by that user now you have to turn the meter off 
and on again. Yeah, and it's working right now. Let's test if it does the same thing in the lux measurement mode. So I'm bringing it down to zero and exposing it instantly to light. Nope, in the lux operating mode we don't have the bug. And let's test again with the foot candela mode covering the sensor and when removing the cover yeah the bug is there it only works up to 19.99 foot candelas and then when it's supposed to switch to the higher range it goes to overload because of a firmware bug probably I will send Mastek an email about this uh, firmware bug and see how they respond but I don't expect to get much from them but we'll see I will post a video update uh, once I get a reply from them in the user manual you also get some tables with various recommended illuminance values for uh, different locations. So let's compare my measurements with what they give you in the user manual. So in our measurements we get something close to uh, 1500 lux. Let's see where do I... Uh... I guess I should be looking at the factories table. In here for a figure of 1500 lux I'm in the design office analysis assemble line and coating. So that's quite okay. Although it has that uh, firmware bug I'm quite happy with this meter and I will be using it and you will be seeing it in my uh, future videos especially in the one where I upgrade some of the lights in here to LED lights. This was the review and teardown of the Mastec MS6612 light meter. Feel free to leave a comment or hit the like button if you enjoyed it. And please don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.